section 8-1. Um, so quick question. How will the probability of p hat minus two standard deviations um, from p hat two standard deviations, right? We're looking at that two standard deviation cutoff and we got a percent of 95.45. How does that change if we want to change our confidence level? So we don't always want to be 95.45% confident. Um, so let's look at some examples. So I'm going to look at some common percents and then we'll look at other percents. So what if we want to look at 68.27%? Um, I chose this percent on purpose because from the empirical rule, we learned that this is one standard deviation. So the formula looks the same. The only thing that changes is that now instead of a two outside of the standard deviation or the square root, it's a one. This will help us understand the formula better. Um, how about 99.73% confident? We learned that that's three standard deviations. So instead of multiplying by two, we multiply by plus or minus three. So hopefully this is helping us see how the formula will change. Um, so let's look at a different percent. So now I wanna do 90%, which is not on the empirical rule. Um, usually we like nice percents like 90, 95, 99, and none of those exist on the empirical rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the normal curve. Um, this is really representing the middle 90% and we're getting rid of the tails. So we're going to put the area in the middle. So we'll put 90% in the middle. And so we'll go ahead and give each tail what's left over. So I have 10% left over, so each tail gets 05. Remember, um, the percents add up to 100. So find each tail. And then we can just use inverse norm of the tail. So inverse norm of 0.05. Um, if you have that T table that I gave you, um, it's actually a little faster. So it has all the common percents. So I'm going to go to that T table. And then we're going to go to the 05 column. And then the Z scores are on the bottom. Notice it says Z. And so if you do inverse norm, you'll notice you get these numbers. If you do inverse norm, you're going to get negative 1.645. And so the T table is just telling me the two Z scores are plus or minus 1.645. So we get negative 1.645 and then positive 1.645. You can check with inverse norm. Um, we're always going to do kind of the same couple values. So I find the table really fast, faster than typing in the calculator. And then you don't have to worry about rounding because the table rounded for you. So we get 1.645. Uh, the calculator is giving us negative because it's calculating the left side. The table is just calculating the right side. Either way, we know it's both of these two scores. And so the formula then just becomes minus 1.645, if you can squeeze that in there, and then plus 1.645 times the standard deviation. So basically the formula is just changing the coefficient in front of the square root. So how are we going to do this in general? Because we're not going to always have 90% either. So in general, this is probably the most important formula. Um, we're going to have k percent, so k percent goes in the middle. Or k out of 100 would be decimal form. You'll find the tails, so you can use the table or inverse norm to find the tails. Yeah. So table or inverse norm of the tail to find the z-score. And so in general, the formula will just be p hat minus some z score, I'll call it z star, times the standard deviation, up to p plus z star times the standard deviation. So the z score just changes depending on the confidence level. So let's check out an example that's not 95.45%. So when we're not at 95.45%, we're going to do p hat plus or minus before we did two, and so that two now changes to z star. We have to find the z score, p hat, q hat over n inside of a square root. 
So studies are performed to estimate the percentage of the nation's 10 million asthmatics, so that's people with asthma, that are allergic to sulfites. So in one survey, 38 out of 500, that screams p hat to me because it's something out of something, uh, randomly selected adults, um, asthmatic adults, were found to be allergic to sulfites. So I noticed that N is 500 because that's the total and then p hat will be 38 out of 500. And we want to find a 90% confidence interval for the true proportion of all US asthma asthmatics that are allergic to sulfites. So we're taking a sample of 500 to estimate about all. So let's calculate p hat. If we do 38 out of 500, I think I get 0 0.076. And then q hat will just be 1 minus that, which gives me 0.924. So we know everything except for the z-score. So to find z-score, we put the percent in the middle. So 90%, 0.90 goes in the middle, and each tail gets 0.05. So again, you can use inverse norm or use the table. I find the table faster. So we go to the 05 column, and the z-score is 1.645. Um, we'll talk about these middle numbers later in the chapter, but we're just using this z-score column on the bottom. So the z-score is 1.645 and negative 1.645. We'll call that z-star in the formula. And let's plug in. So p hat will be 0 0.076 plus or minus, it's plus or minus for the two z scores, 1.645 square root 0 0.076 times 0.924 over 500, all inside a square root. All right, so pull out your calculator for that plus or minus piece. So make sure everything except for the 1.645 is in the square root. So 1.645 square root 0 0.076 times 0 0.924 over 500. Notice my square root bar is covering the whole thing. Um, if your calculator doesn't have the bar move, then you need to make sure everything's inside parentheses. And I get plus or minus 0.0195. So then we'll just subtract and add. I always subtract first because it makes sense for the smaller number to come first. So we get P is in the interval. Remember that's the math notation of 0 0.0565 up to 0 0.0955. So we're pretty sure the true percent is somewhere in between these two numbers. So like a five and a half to nine and a half percent. And then this just tells me P for the true proportion. So P hat is from my sample, P is unknown, but we're pretty confident P is within these numbers. So let's try one more. So, um, if we want to find a confidence interval, um, we need np hat, which happens to equal x. Why is that? Because n times x over n is just x. So that could save you a little bit of time. You can find n times p hat, but you are actually already know x from the question. So 38 would have been x in the previous example. And then nq hat, or n minus x, which is the failures, um, need to both be at least 10. Um, if it's not at least 10, then that means in real life we would need to collect more data or we shouldn't be calculating confidence intervals. So just a reminder of the steps, we find the tails for the confidence level and then we use inverse norm or the table to find the z-scores. That trap, that area in the middle, and then we can just plug into the formula p hat plus or minus z star times square root of p hat over q hat, p, p hat times q hat over n. So this is my general formula. 
So let's try this one more time for um, the, sul the asthmatics allergic to sulfites, but let's change it to 95%. So P hat was 0 0.076, Q hat was 0 0.924, and then N was 500. Right, just copying those numbers. The sample hasn't changed from last time. What's changed is the percent in the middle. So 95% is slightly different from 95.45, so it will be a slightly different z-score. So we're gonna go ahead and put 95 in the middle. Confidence level always goes in the middle. That's the step one. Um, that means I have 5% left over, so each tail gets 025. 025. So you can use inverse norm of 0.025. I'm going to use the table. I find it faster. So we'll go to that table. And then 025 looks to be the third column. And we go down to the bottom and we get 1.960. Inverse norm will give you the same numbers. So the left will be negative 1.960 and the right will be 1.960. So my Z star is 1.960. It doesn't matter if you find the positive or negative one because the plus or minus is taking care of both. So let's go ahead and plug in. So P hat plus or minus 0 0.076 plus or minus. My Z star is 1.960. And then square root of P hat Q hat over N. So square root of 0.076 times 0.924 all over 500. So you'll notice the formula looks the same. We've just changed the z-score. So let's go ahead and type everything. Um, you might have the pre previous example and you could do second enter and just change the z-score. Otherwise type it all. So 1.960, I'm doing this plus or minus piece only. Square root, make sure all three of those numbers are in the square root. And I get 0 0.076 plus or minus 0 0.0232. So the plus or minus piece has changed a little. And then we'll do 0 0.076 minus 0 0.0232, and then we'll do plus. And so we get P is in the interval. My lower is 0 0.0528 and my upper is 0 0.0992. So I'm just gonna copy the previous one so we can compare. Just have them on the same page. So 95% was 0528 up to 0992. And then 90% looks to be a little more narrow because it, it starts at 0565 up to 0955. If you were to graph these on the number line, it's a little bit shorter because it ends a little bit sooner. So what happens is, is we get um, larger confidence intervals without changing the sample size. So for a fixed sample size, to get a larger confidence level, we need a wider interval. It should make sense that it's wider. That's why we're more confident. We're more confident because there's more possibilities. It's like if you're trying to catch a fish or a butterfly with a net, right? The bigger the net, the more likely you are to catch it. So same here. The bigger the interval, the more likely we are to be correct. So we may be more confident with 95%, but it's a little bit less accurate because the interval is bigger. So I'll see you back for the next video.